Okay, so on Monday, we had started discussing how the magnetic field creates the electric field. You see, we had been, in this semester, we started with electric field, the charges were the source of electric field, and then we had seen that moving charges create a magnetic field, and now we are discussing a second source of uh, electric field, which will be the mo uh, changing magnetic field. Uh, on Monday, we had this, uh, started discussing this problem. We had a uniform region of magnet. We have a region of space which had a magnetic field. And in it, we uh, imagined some rails. On these rails, there was a rod a conducting rod that was moving with some speed v. And we had seen that this moving rail creates a current. And because it pushes the charges around, there are the electrons in, the, in this conductor, the if it's a metal, the electrons feel a force due to the motion. And what's the direction of the force the electrons feel? To the left, to the right. V cross B is towards the right, but the electric electron has a negative charge, so towards the left. So the force towards to acting on an electron over here is towards the left. So the current is running towards the right. And we had seen that the, the whole system, in fact, behaves as if it has an EMF source given by minus the, phi, the magnetic flux by this time derivative. And then we said, OK, the magnetic flux, we can define, it, which is defined as B dot dA over some area. In this case, it is the, the area enclosed by this circle. And this EMF, we said that it's the work done on a charge as it moves around the circuit. The work is done only by the electric field so the EMF is actually E dot dL around the circuit. So we have this, on one hand, we have this closed loop. On the other hand, we have this area over which we are evaluating this magnetic flux. And we said that this direction of dA and the direction of dL has to be consistent with each other. Meaning that if you look at the circuit, if the EMF is positive in the clockwise sense, then the flux you have to define as using the right hand rule, it is into the screen. So if you apply uh, these equations, since the area vector is into the screen, for this configuration, the magnetic field is also into the screen, so the flux is positive. And since this area is become, getting smaller and smaller as that rod is moving downwards, we had said that the flux is decreasing. So the phi the rate of change of the magnetic flux with time is negative. And due to that negative sign, the EMF is positive, meaning that, well, the EMF is pushing the charges in the positive sense, which we define to be clockwise. So as long as you are consistent with the direction of the positive EMS, well, this loop, and the direction of the area vector A, you will be able to determine in which direction uh, what appears. Well, nice, so you have, let's say it moves down, then the EMF will be in this direction, then it starts moving up. Well, then the flux is increasing, the derivative of the flux with respect to time is change. This change is sign. If this change is sign, it means EMF change is sign, so the current will be running on the, to the other way. Well, let's say if the, Rod is moving upward. Again, let's say this is our positive direction for EMF. Then the area is pointing inside. The flux is positive, but the flux is increasing if the rod is moving upward. Since the flux is increasing, this derivative is positive. This negative sign just means that EMF is negative, meaning that since the clockwise sense was the positive sense, we had defined that to be the positive sense of the EMF, EMF being negative, meaning that it will be pushing the electron the other way around, the counterclockwise sense.
Let's do some examples. Again, let's assume we have a region of space in which the magnetic field is uniform and into the screen. And let's say in this region, you take a circular loop. Now let's say you decrease you decrease r. What will be the direction of the current induced? There's a resistance somewhere. If you reduce r, what will be the direction of the current? Clockwise, counterclockwise. Well, in this problem, you see the wire is moving. You can, if you like, you can move, use the force law. You see, just take this segment. If R becomes smaller, it means this segment is moving in that direction. If that segment, the electron in that segment will also be moving in that direction. So they will feel a force in this direction. So the, since the electron will be pushed in this direction, the current will be counterclockwise. No, sorry, the electrons will be pushed in this direction. V cross B is pointing in this direction, the electron is negative, so the electrons will feel a force in this direction. The electrons will be pushed counterclockwise, so the current will run clockwise. Now we, let's use Faraday's law. First you need to choose some positive uh, direction of the EMF. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Clockwise. Okay, so let's say that you choose the EMF to be positive if it is clockwise. You will be evaluating it in this sense. What is the direction of the area vector that you should choose consistent with that clockwise loop? Into the screen. So the flux, is it positive or negative at this moment? It is positive, the area vector is into the screen, the magnetic field is into the screen, so the flux is positive. Well, does the, the magnitude of flux increase or decrease as the loop shrinks? It decreases. A positive quantity decreasing in magnitude, it is just getting smaller. So the derivative of flux with respect to time is negative. negative. So this is negative, there is another negative sign, so that is positive if that EMF is positive and we had chosen the clockwise sense to be the positive direction. Let's say the magnitude of B is increasing. Oh, before continuing, let's look at, let's continue with this one. Okay, do you have any questions on how we determine this direction of I? Okay, you see. The first method, since here we have moving charges, moving wires around, the magnetic field is constant. This, this is kind of, might be the easier. You see, the magnetic, the, this segment is moving in this direction. The electrons in this segment are moving in that direction. V cross B, so the electrons will feel a force in this direction. So the electrons will start moving around in the counterclockwise sense. But the current is in the direction of the opposite of the, uh, opposite of the motion of the electrons because the electrons are negatively charged. So the current will be clockwise. This is one approach. The second approach using uh, Faraday's law, well, we first have to determine, there are two things we have to decide. First, the positive direction of the EMF. 
Is the EMF considered to be positive if it is pushing the current in the clockwise sense or in the counterclockwise sense? It is a choice. Not, the result doesn't depend on your choice. Let's say in this case we chose it to be, in the second round, let's choose it to be counterclockwise. So I will say that EMF is positive if it is pushing a current in the counterclockwise sense. Okay, so since the current uh, EMF is positive if the current is running in the counterclockwise sense, right hand rule tells me that when I'm calculating the magnetic flux, I have to take out of the screen as the positive direction of my area vector. They have to be consistent. Okay, if the area vector is pointing out of the screen, magnetic field is into the screen, so the flux is negative. Okay, as the ring is getting smaller, the area is becoming smaller, B doesn't change, so their product, the flux in magnitude, becomes smaller. But you see, flux is a negative quantity whose magnitude becomes smaller. That means the flux is increasing with time. Do you agree? Let's say it's minus five units, minus five uh, Tesla meter squares at some moment. Then after some time, it becomes minus one Tesla meter squared. But since minus one is larger than minus five, the flux is increasing. Similarly here, since I chose the area vector to be in that direction, the flux turned out to be negative and it's getting smaller in magnitude. That means the flux is increasing with time. So at that time, derivative is positive. Minus makes this negative, so EMF is negative. Negative with respect to what? But remember, first we chose the positive sense of the EMF. We said that the, I will, we said we decided that I will consider the EMF to be positive if it is running a current in the counterclockwise sense. But now we found the EMF to be negative which basically tells me that the EMF is running the current in the clockwise sense, not the counterclockwise sense. Other questions? Let's see, what if B is increased, the magnitude of B is increasing? Now there is no motion. Hmm? Counterclockwise. Counter Anybody else? By the way, I mean, back to part A. We have the third means. Okay, we use one approach was to say, okay, they are moving, they are moving charges around, so let's calculate the forces they feel, and then we set I is clockwise. The second way we did, we just directly use the Faraday's law. The third, we can use the lens rule. You see, lens rule tell, tells us that uh, the induced EMF tries to oppose whatever has caused it. So there are a couple of things you can do. What is the reason of the induced EMF in this problem? No, in part A, still in part A. What causes the induced EMF? The shrinking. So basically the motion of the ring. So the, mo the ring is moving in this direction, so the current should be such that there, it should create a force in the opposite direction to oppose it. Well, what, is, what should be the direction of the eye if there, there, should, there is a force that would oppose the shrinkage? Remember, the force is I dl cross B. Now, if you take dl to be in this direction, if you assume I to be in this direction, then dl cross B is outward. Great. So, there is a force that tries to prevent the shrinkage. What else can you say is causing the, this induced current? 
the change of flux. You see the, let's say, A is in that direction. The flux is decreasing. A is in that direction. The flux is positive, so it is becoming smaller and smaller. So the current should enhance that flux. So it should create a magnetic field that is pointing in this direction. Well, if the current is running clockwise, it creates a magnetic field in that direction, trying to increase the magnetic flux. No, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm, I'm still discussing part A. Now we will start part B. Any questions on part A? You see, just don't pick one of these three means of looking at this problem and say, okay, I got that, so that's fine. Just try to, uh, I mean, you should be able to apply all three perspectives. Yes, sure, sure. If the area is, be the area is becoming smaller, so the flux is decreasing, right? So in magnitude. So now this, uh, the, this change in, in the flux is inducing the current. So the current should be such that it should decrease this decrease in the flux. You see, let's say that without any, ignoring the induced current, the flux, let's say, decreases by five tesla meters squared. The induced current should be such that it should make this 5, 4, let's say. You see, how it can do that? You see, there is this magnetic field that we apply. If a current is induced, that current also creates a magnetic field. So that current should reduce the decrease in the flux. And how? Well, if the current, in the, right, as it's getting smaller, the flux is decreasing, but if the induced current creates an additional magnetic field into the screen, then this reduction will be reduced. There will be less reduction in the flux. Let's say, okay, any questions on this lens rule? Rarely. Well, it depends on many factors. If it's a superconductor, yes. If it's not a superconductor, no. Now, let's look at this part B. Again, the same system, but I don't touch the radio, I don't touch the wire. I just change the applied magnetic field. I create a larger magnetic field. So what will be the direction of the current? Counterclockwise. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Hmm? Clockwise. Why clockwise? Why counterclockwise? Why into the screen? Because the magnetic flux is decreasing and... Decreasing or increasing? B is increasing. No, why does the current... I mean, you see, first, forget the current at, at the beginning. You see, what can you say about the flux? Does it increase or decrease? Decrease. What is the, is it positive or negative? The flux? Which, air, which direction do you choose for your area? You see, this is the definition of the flux.
What is the direction of your DA? Well, it's up to you. Just choose. Either outside or inside. It's up to you. OK, outside. So the A is pointing outside. So if the A is pointing outside, B is inside, the flux is negative. Right, because B dot DA is negative. OK, so with that choice of DA, the flux is negative. That's just, uh, don't forget. Now, the magnitude of B is increasing. So does the magnitude of the flux increase or decrease? Well, the flux B is uniform. You can just take it out of that integral if you like. So it's just B times A. That's the magnitude. If the B is increasing, area is constant. So the magnitude is increasing. But remember, B is negative and increasing. An example, it starts with five, minus 5 tesla meters squares, and then it becomes minus 100 tesla meters squared. Minus 5 is larger than minus 100. So it becomes smaller. B becomes smaller. If B becomes smaller, or if the flux becomes smaller with time, then that time derivative is negative. So epsilon should be positive. So what is the positive sense of the current if dA is in that direction? Use your right hand, your thumb in the direction of dA. Your uh, other fingers will be in the direction of the uh, loop. So it should be counterclockwise. So if B is increasing, I should be counterclockwise. Let's see, another way of looking at exactly the same problem using lens rule. Well, B is increasing. Nothing is moving. B is increasing in that direction, so the induced current should create a B in the opposite direction to counter the, the uh, increase in B. Well, to create a magnetic field in the opposite direction, the current should be running counterclockwise. Which way? The Ampere's law? Hmm? The, no, the, the Faraday's law or the Lenz rule? This one. OK, let's, let's write the steps. So the first step. We should calculate the flux. To calculate the flux, we have to choose a direction of dA. It's, up, it's, it's a choice. I mean, it doesn't change anything. The results will be the same, no matter which direction you choose. But in the, previous, in the last example, we chose the dA to be pointing out of the screen. Inside, fine. So is the flux positive or negative? Well, let's see. The A is into the screen. B is given to be into the screen. They are in the same direction. So B dot D A, you have two vectors pointing in the same direction. Their scalar product will be positive. So we have the positive flux. Now let's look at the magnitude. Well, the magnitude will be just the product of B and A. Since B is increasing, these are just the scalar numbers. These are not, this is not a scalar product, it's just product of ordinary, these are the product of magnitudes. B is increasing, A is constant. So this magnitude of phi B is increasing.
But the magnitude of phi b is just phi b itself because phi b is positive. So I'm just combining this result that phi b is positive and this result that the derivative of the magnitude of phi b is positive. Uh, the magnitude of phi b is just phi b because phi b is positive. Now we have the Faraday's law. Which, is, which just states that the induced EMF will be minus the rate of change of the magnetic flux passing through our loop. But this, we had already said that it is positive, so EMF is negative. Now the positive direction of EMF. we have to determine the positive direction of EMF. And to determine the positive direction of EMF, what we use is that the A is into the screen. Well, if the A is into the screen, what is the positive direction of the EMF, clockwise or counterclockwise? Let me see your right hands your thumb should be pointing in the direction of dA. Your fingers show the direction of the positive sense of your, of your loop. So it's clockwise. So we had determined that the positive direction of EMF is clockwise, but we also know that EMF is negative. So it tells me that the induced EMF will push the current not in the clockwise sense, but in the counterclockwise sense. Any questions on this? Okay, another example. Now let's assume we have a region where we have a more or less uniform magnetic field. And in this region, I put a solenoid. No, uh, I put a, a rectangular loop. This is the rectangular loop. So it's just, it is staying almost vertically towards you. So it's just like this. Let's say the sides have lengths A and B. Okay, how would you like to choose the area vector of this loop? You see, you, you need to make, there are two things we have to determine. The direction of the area vector and the direction of the loop encircling that area. They are just arbitrary. You can choose whichever way you like, as long as they are consistent with each other. You either choose your loop, loop direction, for example, you can choose your loop direction in this sense, if this is the sense of your loop, then the area vector should be in that direction, towards your right. 
If you choose the loop direction in the opposite sense, then the area vector should be somewhat pointing in the opposite direction. Let's say, let's choose the loop direction to be in this sense. In that case, what is the direction of the area? Somewhat downward. This is dA. Now, let me call this angle theta. You see, this is the area vector. The magnetic field is pointing in that direction. The angle between the area vector and the magnetic field is what I call theta. What is the flux passing through this loop? It's B times dA. The flux, the B is uniform, so it's just B dot dA, this, not B dot A, the scalar product, which is the magnitude of B, magnitude of area times cosine theta. The magnitude of area, if you like, is just the product A times B. And what is the EMF? Well, minus d phi b by dt. b is constant, let's say. a is constant. But theta might be changing in time. So it's sine theta times d theta by dt. I'm just assuming a constant b, constant a. But this loop, who knows, maybe something is rotating it. Somebody calls it to rotate. And theta will be time dependent. Well, I'm, this is the what depends on time. I'm taking the time derivative of cosine theta. Cosine becomes minus sine when I take the derivative. But you see, the Faraday's law also has a minus sign. There's a one minus sign over here. Another minus sign is due to the derivative of the cosine. Now let's assume that either you, are, you cause this loop to rotate with some constant angular velocity. As a function of time, this is how the, that angle theta changes. Then we have an EMF given by BA sine omega t times omega. It's epsilon zero and sine omega t. Well, we have just made an electric generator. Which one? This one. Well, you see here, theta is omega t. So here I get sine omega t. But then I have the derivative of theta with respect to t. That is omega. So to generate electricity in this form, the only thing we need to do is just build some mechanism that would cause this thing to rotate. If you like, you can use dams where you store water and then let the water fall from a height and just put some uh, some pallets over here, which starts rotating when the water falls on them. Or if you like, you can just use some gasoline, burn the gasoline, call, and the gasoline uh, rotates the, the crank of your engine. And once the crank is rotating, you just uh, couple it to a generator, the arm of the generator. So it also rotates, which rotates such loops. And the easiest one will be to generate an EMF that is changing with time. So this is nothing but an AC, AC, cure, AC source.
Well, you see, here what we had done, what causes the change of the flux? In this case, the flux is changed due to the motion of this uh, loop. Well, instead of changing the flux, you can change the magnetic field. The area remains constant, let's say. Theta will still be changing in that case. If you are rotating the magnetic field, theta will be changing. Or you can rotate the magnetic field itself rather than rotating the loop, and you get this result. But usually, it will be harder to change the magnetic field than call the loop to rotate. At this moment, no. You see, if there is no current running through it, there won't be any torque. Let's see what the torque does. Let's see, suppose that at this moment, it is rotating clockwise since this loop. At this instant, what will be the direction of the current? You see, theta, let, let's, let's, let's apply the steps. Okay, the, uh, we had already chosen our area vector, so some of the steps are already done. Is the flux positive or negative? negative? The flux is negative. Does its magnitude increase or decrease as it's rotating from this orientation to slightly vertical orientation? <laughs> the, the magnitude is increasing, the flux is negative, so the derivative of the flux is negative. If the derivative of the flux is negative, due to this minus sign, the EMF will be positive. Well, positive EMF just means that the current is running in this sense. What is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment created by this induced current? We use the right-hand rule. It's basically in the direction of dA. It's in the same direction. Well, let's see. If you have a magnetic dipole moment pointing in this direction, as your friend points out, there will be a torque acting on it. What will be the direction of the torque? It's mu cross p. Mu cross p, the torque is pointing towards you. In which direction will this torque tr uh, try to rotate this loop? In the counterclockwise sense. So you see, if this loop is rotating in the clockwise sense, the uh, torque uh, created due to the induced current will try to rotate it in the opposite direction. Hmm? It will, I mean, it will be harder to rotate such a loop in a magnetic field than rotating this loop in the absence of the magnetic field. And we also see an, another application of the lens rule. You see, it's this rotation that is creating the uh, EMF. So that EMF induces a current which creates a magnetic dipole moment which, try, which will try to rotate the loop in the opposite direction. So it will make it difficult for you to rotate. You see, otherwise you, you will violate energy conservation. If it were the other way around, if you rotate the loop in one sense and then the induced current will start, if the induced current creates a torque which will also rotate it in, in the same sense, it will just keep getting faster and faster. So that's basically the origin of the lens rule, energy conservation. Okay, let's give a uh, six minute break and at 50 we will start.